the leaves resemble the French sorrel, but this is a wild sorrel that grows here. It's uh, yeah, very lemony. Woo, man, it's like eating lemons. Um, so it's probably got some sort of acidity, right? So. Come on. Hey, it's Greg here at MaritimeGardening.com and uh, you know, I was just thinking the other day, I get a lot of comments when people find out that I grow kale and they're like, oh yuck, I hate kale, you know, I can't believe you grow that. Or they'll say, uh, I don't really like it, I just make it as smoothies, which, you know, depending on what your smoothie is, you're really not eating kale, you're eating milk and bananas and <laughs> yogurt, whatever else you're adding to the uh, smoothie, right? You're really uh, watering the kale down with other things you like more. Uh, so I thought I'd do a little video on just uh, things that go with kale and, and, and how I eat kale and, and uh, just what goes well with it and different ways to prepare it. Uh, so sort of walk you around my garden a little bit and show you other things I tend to add in with it. So uh, just to, you know, if you want to try, right? So I mean, I've done videos on how I like to cook. I eat, you know, 90% of my kale. No, 100%, 100% of my kale, I cook it. Uh, it'll go in a soup, it'll, but usually it's, it's a greens, it's a side of greens, you know, like we have a meal and we'll have, uh, you know, some kind of meat or fish, and we'll have some sort of uh, starch, you know, rice or pasta or potatoes or something like that. And we usually have two vegetable dishes on, on the plate, uh, or at least one. And uh, often we have uh, kale, uh, a side of greens, a mess of greens is what I would say. And usually it's uh, chopped up kale. Uh, we put a little bit of oil in the fry pan. I put some, uh, you know, one or two cloves of garlic in there, something spicy, some hot peppers, toss that around for a minute. And then we throw the kale in, toss that around for a second, put the lid on for about a minute or two, take the lid off, toss it around a little bit, done, right? Um, so that's how I like to eat kale. Um, sometimes when we're frying up the garlic and the the, the, you know, the hot, uh, you know, hot sauce or whatever we're adding to that, uh, hot peppers. Uh, we'll add a, a, a str a one slice of bacon cut up, right? We don't do it every time. Certainly when the kids were um, really young, I would always add a slice of bacon to it because they just liked it more. Now they don't care. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, right? So it's a good way if you're, you know, if you got, uh, number one, I guess if you're not a vegetarian, but <laughs> if you like bacon and you don't like kale, Try adding some bacon to the kale. You might like it a little bit more. Or if you've got some leftover ham or something like that, right? Just that smoky, you know, pig taste <laughs> seems to really add, a, you know, an element of uh, good flavor to it if you're, if you're new to having greens in your diet. Uh, we eat a ridiculous, I grow a lot and we eat a lot, right? So, I mean, that's one thing you can do. But another thing to do is add other greens in with the kale. Um, because they, it adds different sort of flavors to it. So that's what I'm going to show you right here today. I hope they're not too windy. It's a bit gusty around here. I'll, hopefully you can hear me okay, and I apologize if there's a bit too much wind in the background. Uh, so here I've got some uh, French sorrel, right? This here stuff. Now it's a great thing to grow. It's very easy to grow. It's, it's kind of uh, pest proof. Doesn't, the slugs don't seem to like this stuff, so it's kind of handy to have in a garden. I wouldn't grow it in with kale like I've done here. Uh, that was a really stupid thing to do. I, I, they go together, right? So, you know, if I had a big bouquet of kale, let's say the amount of kale that's on this plant right here, that much, or even twice this much, I might pick, you know, this stuff has a very strong flavor. It's kind of bitter and lemony, so it adds a sort of lemon taste. But I'd probably add about that much for a mess of greens, right? Maybe a little bit more, maybe a little, it depends on your test, but these have a sort of lemony, uh, acidic taste, which, which goes well. You know, sometimes I'm, I'll make kale, I'll squeeze a little bit of lemon on it, but um, if, you don't, if you don't wanna have to, I can't grow lemons here in Canada. <laughs> so this is the next best thing, right? This French sorrel. And it's a really tough plant. I, I, as far as I understand it, it's a, it's a perennial. So this one went to seed. Most of them didn't go to seed, but this one did. So if I leave these seeds in the garden, I'll have even more sorrels. Very weed-like, and uh, but yeah, I would not plant it in with kale because uh, the slugs don't like it. So where the two are touching, your kale tends to look like this, <laughs> which is not what you want. <laughs> so the kale on this over here is hardly got any slug damage. And where these two things are touching, it's just been uh, a complete uh, free-for-all with slugs. Anyway, French sorrel is a nice thing to have with kale. 
is another nice little uh, sort of perennial green uh, called Bloody Dock, okay? And uh, the leaves um, look like this. It's a very pretty sort of plant, almost looks ornamental. Um, Flavor-wise, it's not unlike the French sorrel. It's got a bit of a lemon taste. It's definitely, you know, a green. Um, you could have this in a salad. It's not, it doesn't have the, the flavor of lettuce. It's more like a dandelion green, but not as bad, right? Um, so it's, it's got a bit of bitterness to it, but definitely an ideal thing to put in soups, cooked veg, and so on and so forth. So you, this is the sort of thing you could add to uh, having kale. I'm not, I don't have any growing right now, but um, in the spring, um, early in the season, uh, I often add dandelion greens to the kale. Goes really well together. Um, you you want to pick the dandelion greens off dandelion plants. There's a lot of plants that look like dandelions that aren't dandelions, but uh, and you want to pick them ideally before the plant starts making its flowers. That's when dandelion greens taste the best. I've never grown a dandelion green cultivar in my garden. I just get them. I have plenty of dandelions on my lawn, so I just pick them off of there. Early in the year, having you know, like in May, there isn't a lot of greens in the garden. It's still a bit early here, but there's a, a couple weeds that tend to grow that have nice. Um, nice greens that I like. Dandelion's one of them. Here's another kind of green that sometimes I'll add to uh, yeah, either a soup or when I'm cooking up uh, green. Now these ones, have been, I, I think I made soup or something like that. I think it was me that did this. Uh, hopefully there's not an animal. Usually animals don't eat this stuff. But this is another kind of sorrel. But it's a wild one that grows here. You can see the, the leaves resemble the French sorrel. But this, this is a wild sorrel that grows here. It's a uh, yeah, very lemony. Woo! Man, it's like eating lemons. Um, so it's probably got some sort of acidity, right? So some of those things with acidity go really well with kale. So this is just a wild one that was growing somewhere. I put it in here in this little tiny bed because I like it. And it comes back every year. <laughs> it's free. Right? It's great stuff. Uh, yeah, very lemony. If you want to have a lemony taste in your... Uh, and your kale, just add some of this. If you, if you notice it growing, it's got a very unique shape, the leaf. Right, you look it up, Google it. But uh, it's very uh, spinach-like in terms of the shape of the leaf. I can't, there's hardly any perfect leaves here, but um, very spinach-like sort of shape. It's got a little, I don't know how well you can see that, but two little sort of bumps down near the bottom. See that? Very spinach-like shape to the leaf. Anyway, and, and, and these, these have it as well, right? French sorrel has those two bumps at the bottom as well. Right? That's the idea. Anyway, so yeah, if you can't get French sorrel seeds, which is easy to get, um, sometimes it just grows wild. It grows wild here. And finally, one more thing I really like to add to kale. This is probably one of my favorite things to add to kale, is uh, Swiss chard, right? And this is a great time of year to be picking Swiss chard. Um, so, you know, if you've ever cooked Swiss chard before, it's very, it's got a lot of acid in it as well. I think oxalic acid. Um, so when you, if you cook, if I picked as, as much Swiss chard as I could fit into a large bowl, when you cook it, it just disappears. <laughs> it just shrinks down to nothing, right? Just because of the nature of the, the cell structure of these plants. And by the way, if you've got to still have Swiss chard growing in your garden, you should be harvesting and storing all of it right now because uh, once it starts getting, I mean, or, or even, I mean, this is where I live, right, in Nova Scotia, it's going to start to get really cold really soon. And uh, Swiss chard, it can take some cold, but it can't take, it's not as tough as kale. So uh, a really good hard freeze will just pulverize all of it and it'll be lost. So I have to start picking this and, and, and processing it and freezing it. I freeze everything in little cakes really soon. <laughs> I got to get after this because um, I've grown, grown so much and it's such a wonderful... Uh, vegetable, but anyway, if you're if you've noticed that, you know when you have it on its own, I mean it, it's lovely, and I like I like having it with fish because you like to have acidic things with fish usually. Um, I like to have a messy mess of uh, Swiss chard with uh, like you know fried fish sort of thing. You get the, you know the fried fish with all the fat and the batter and all that sort of stuff, and you want to have acidic things with it to sort of lighten things up again. But I love having big pile of Swiss chard with fish, but. Uh, Another thing you can do with your Swiss chard is make, you know, like if you're going to have kale, uh, in terms of your, your pile of leaves that are going to be cooked, 
half leaves, half Swiss chard, or sorry, half kale, half Swiss chard, or maybe two thirds kale, one third Swiss chard, that sort of thing. Uh, it, really, it really depends on how much you want it to shrink. Right? Uh, one quarter Swiss chard, three quarters kale. It goes really, really well with kale. We love mixing it in with the kale. And actually my, my kids aren't as fond of Swiss chard as, I mean, I grew up having this sort of thing, so it, it, uh, it's sort of nostalgic when I eat it. It's a very traditional vegetable here because it grows well here. I didn't grow up eating kale. Um, but uh, my kids like having it in with the kale, <laughs> right? So um, yeah, Swiss chard, another great way to go with your kale. So, you know, if you're not uh, cooking your kale, and you know some people that say that it's more nutritious raw and blah, 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 blah. Eh, it, look, it's all about flavor for me and, and taste. And, uh, you know, I think you're gonna eat a lot more kale if it's cooked than, if, than otherwise, because, you know, when you cook it, it just shrinks. <laughs> so yeah, maybe uh, one cup of raw kale is better raw than cooked but if you cook your kale you're going to eat four cups at a time or six cups at a time because it's going to shrink so much right so you're getting that much more uh, i think it all works out in the end i don't worry too much about it uh you know every last time i got my blood work done everything was just great i'm a 48 year old man i don't take any vitamins it all worked out. it's all working out fine for greg <laughs> so you know you know get, get your health advice from your doctor but uh yeah there's a lot of different information there on the internet i don't worry about it too much i just make really good tasting food try to eat a lot of a lot my vegetables have a lot of variety in my diet. Seems to work out okay. But yeah, Swiss chard with kale is a real winner. And if you're not fond of Swiss chard, but you live somewhere where it grows really well, like where I live here, mix it in with your kale. Then you can have both of them. And you've got just that much more variety in your diet and more variety in your garden, right? Because Swiss chard tends to be kind of pest proof, right? Kale gets that whole family that kales and gets attacked by different kinds of pests. This doesn't get attacked by anything. Nothing like this. <laughs> right? so, so it's a perfect thing to eat. I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. And until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.